Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. It is a beautiful, rainy morning. We need to be uh, thankful for go all of God's blessings, whether they're uh, bright, sunshiny, or whether they're wet and um, like today. Um, I, so I have some announcements. I want to welcome you, those of you who are here and those who are online. Thank you for coming to worship with us. Uh, it is all about worship today. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. So some announcements. Uh, tonight is uh, Patterson's Mom's Club or Mother's Club. They will meet at uh, Heba Hannah's house. Uh, that information is in the bulletin. Uh, next Sabbath is a communion Sabbath. Uh, please come and worship with us through, um, through communion and worship and foot washing. Foot washing will start at uh, 9.30 and go till 10 o'clock just before service starts. The, uh, the, the very next day, um, next Sunday, will be a special resurrection service. Um, and uh, I think that pretty much uh, explains itself. We don't uh, we don't call it by that uh, by that other name, but we celebrate the resurrection for sure. So, um, women's ministry, Rachel, would you like to come up and make an announcement? Good morning, Patterson Avenue ladies. Um, April twentieth is our women's tea. I'm looking forward to it. I'm asking everyone to um, please RSVP by April 1 so I can get all the needed supplies and decorations together. Um, please uh, RSVP with your picture. We're going to do something with that later. We're also um, doing a diaper drive for um, families in need. Um, I think that's it. But anyway, um, I hope to see you all there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Definitely consider all of the ministries that uh, Patterson have. We're very fortunate to have so many, uh, so thank you for supporting those. Uh, enjoy the worship service.
Happy Sabbath, church. Our responsive reading this morning is taken from the back of our hymnal, number 714. Please join me in reading the bold print. O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. From the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is a man that you are mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You made him ruler over the works of your hands. You put everything under his feet, all flocks and herds, and the beasts of the fields, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Please join us in singing our gathering song, hymn number 229, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Please stand. Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you, Lord, that you are our God, our King. We invite you, Lord, to be with us this morning. We are very grateful, Lord, for that train because we need that train. Same time, Lord, I just pray for those who are troubling friends coming through that train. We ask you, Lord, to continue to bless us. In Jesus' name, amen. Genesis chapter 5 verse 24 says, Enoch was communing with God, and then he was there no longer, because God had taken him. We are invited to be like Enoch, to take time to commune with God. Please join us in singing, Oh, Let Me Walk With Thee, hymn number 554. <laughs> Stop. 
Ephesians 4.15 says, Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head that is Christ. Let us pray that God will open our eyes to his truth. And in the word of this hymn, we are about to sing, Open my, eye, my heart and let me prepare to sing. Love within, with thy children thus to share. Please join us in singing hymn number 326. Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hands a wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear voices of truth thou sendest near. Christ has the following insight. With the love that never faltered, Christ spoke to men with the words of eternal life. To the weary and sin burdened, he said, come to unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He invited them, take my yoke upon you and learn, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Let us sing of Jesus' love to us, and carry that love with us to all we meet, to rest in Jesus together. Join us in singing, I will sing of Jesus' love, hymn number 183. <laughs>
If you'd like to turn in your Bibles to Psalm 55, it's long enough so that you can catch up if you're not quick at finding it. To the chief musician with stringed instruments, a contemplation of David, give ear to my prayer, O God, and do not hide yourself from my supplication. Attend to me and hear me. I am restless in my complaint and moan noisily because of the voice of the enemy, because of the opposition of the wicked, for they bring down trouble upon me, and in wrath they hate me. My heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. So I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove, I would fly away and be at rest. Indeed, I would wander far off, and remain in the wilderness. I would hasten my escape from the windy storm and tempest. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around on its walls. Iniquity and trouble are also in the midst of it. Destruction is in its midst. Oppression and deceit do not depart from its streets. For it is not an enemy who reproaches me, Then I could bear it. Nor is it one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me, that I could hide from him. But it was you, a man, my equal, my companion, and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked to the house of God in the throng. Let death seize them. Let them go down alive into hell. For wickedness is in their dwellings and among them. As for me, I will call upon God, and the Lord shall save me, evening and morning and at noon. I will pray and cry aloud. He shall hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul in peace from the battle that was waged against me. For there were many against me. God will hear and afflict them, even he who abides from old. Because they do not change, therefore they do not fear God. He has put forth his hands against those who are at peace with him. He has broken his covenant. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in their heart. His words were softer than oil, yet they were drawn swords. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. But you, O God, shall bring forth, bring them down to the pit of destruction. Bloodthirsty and deceitful men shall not live out half their days. But I will trust in you. If you're able to kneel. Father in heaven, how wonderful is your name above all the earth. How can we not adore you except that we do not take the time to learn of you, to seek of you, to taste of you, even though you bid us to come and taste and to see and to seek and know that you are God. You sit above the enthroned above the cherubim. You are excellent and awesome and mighty, and sacred, and holy. And we are not. But we have come to worship you. Father, we pray that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit, even now, 
to recognize your supreme excellence, to realize that you alone can save us and not we ourselves. So, Father, help us to worship you. Help us to put you in the right place in that room most high in our minds, in our lives, in our families, in our work, in, all, in our church. All that we do, help us to put what you, where you belong. So, Father, thank you for blessing us. Thank you for helping us. Thank you for being available to us. Though we are inclined to say, O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver us from these bodies of death? You are there for us, even at a split second's prayer, to help us, to embody us, to allow us to be whom we wouldn't be otherwise, without your worthiness, without your grace, without your mercy, without your strength without your wisdom, and without your protection. Oh, Father, give us these gifts. Here are confessions that we are unworthy. Yet, bless us in our repentance with the gifts that you give to the righteous because of who you are. So, Father, we thank you for blessing us. We thank you for this church. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the the time that you set aside to worship and to fellowship and to rest from all our toil. For you cursed the ground for our sake, but you also gave us a day to rest and to put our toil aside. And Father, there are many of us who are, are struggling with various things. Actually, all of us are struggling in one way or another, whether it's physically whether it's spiritually, whether it's mentally, mentally, whether it's financially, whether we're lonely. Father, we pray that you will help us, that you will quicken us to recognize the need of our brothers and sisters, and that you will quicken them to recognize our needs, that we may honor you as we commune together, as we fellowship, as we seek to fill the needs that are so prevalent in our church, in our lives, in our communities. So we thank you for all of the blessings that you've done, and we pray that you will continue to bless us, to be able to help those, to reach out, to visit, to encourage, to bless, and to help, to rest, and to call the Sabbath a delight. So, Father, we lift up those who are infirmed among us, and we lift up those who are not able to be here and pray that you will bless them with the peace of the Sabbath by your grace and for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We are practicing online giving. We do not uh, pass the plate as in the times of old, but... We do, uh, you can go to uh, our website and uh, find the link to give there. Or if you'd like to give in person, there are envelopes in the pew backs in front of you. And uh, there is a box on the wall if you would like to, uh, if you would like to give in person. We would uh, certainly appreciate that. It'll help keep the lights on. Uh, and just a, a, an announcement that we haven't made in a while, um, if you uh, I, I recommend that you, if you want the money to go in a particular place, put where it's to go. Um, otherwise, um, I, it will go to the church, which is good. Um, the, the, uh, the conference does not pay us to pay the electric bill. So if you want to give an offering uh, to the local church, that is certainly appreciated. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Melanie, uh, if you'd like to come forward, um, send the children forward to children to hear the children's story. Oh, I'm sorry. I got the names wrong. Melanie's telling the scripture. Oh, no big deal. All right. Children, come forward. Sam, Sam Jackson and Martin, come on up here. Here comes Quinn. Anybody else? Julia? 
No, y'all can come, y'all come up here. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and sit down. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to sit down too. Alrighty. Good morning, everybody. All right. We have an object lesson this morning. I like object lessons. They tend to stick with you. All right, here I have this uh, beautiful banana. Isn't it lovely? There it is. All right, let's think of some foods that we make with bananas that are really good. Can you think of anything? Banana bread. I love banana bread. Do you guys like banana bread? Oh, it, that would be good too. Okay, what about... Banana splits. Do y'all like banana splits? Anything else we can think of with a banana? Oh, that's good. Banana pudding. Okay. Um, just cutting up a banana and putting it in cereal, that's always good too, isn't it? Now, here I brought this uh, red delicious apple bag. If I put my banana in this bag, is it, is it still a banana or is it now an apple? It, it Does it matter that it's in this apple bag? No, it doesn't. What if I put my banana... Uh, I'm going to put it in this orange bag. There we go. This might, this might make a difference here. Okay, there it is. It's got the label here, oranges. Is it a now an orange or is it a banana still? It's still a banana. Nothing, nothing's changed here, has it? Okay. Um, we got a lesson here with this. Bible lesson. Several lessons, actually. We want to be true to who we are. God's given us talents, and we don't. We want to use those talents, those gifts that He's given us, and to the glory of His name, um, and not pretend to be something that we are not. Now, what if bananas bruise really easy, by the way? And so we have to use our words when we talk to other people in a kind way because we don't want to lose, leave bruises on their heart. What if I painted my banana yellow? If I got this paint out and I covered it in yellow paint, would that change the fruit inside? No, it wouldn't, would it? Yeah, okay. So here is the lesson for that. All right. We don't want to be, we don't want to fake, we, we want to be real. God asks us to put both feet into the church, not one foot in the church, one foot out of the church. He wants all of us, not part of us. And that's part of what we talked about in our classroom this week. Um, we were reading one of the Psalms. And uh, we're, we're doing the Psalms also in the class and trying to follow along. Um, so we want to be careful about our lives and how we lead them. We want to be the real thing. And we want to be examples to others. Psalms 34, 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is a man who takes refuge in him. Galatians 5, to 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Well, we can remember the fruit of the Spirit with the banana, too. It's, a lot of people don't like bananas. My children didn't like bananas till they were older. I'm not real sure why. Do you, do you all like bananas? Yeah? Well, still, some of us still don't. Okay. Um... Let's have a quick prayer. Remember, stay true to God. Give him all your heart, not half of it. Be true to the talents that God has given you. Use them to the glory of his name. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for the children that are here and the ones that are missing. We want to lift them up in prayer. Please bless our Sabbath day. Thank you that we are here to worship you. Um, bless our coming week. We ask it in your loving name. Amen. Y'all can go back.
morning, church. Um, it's an honor and privilege to read the Word of God, isn't it? Um, this morning, I'm reading um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 25 from the NIV. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful word of truth and light. Happy Sabbath. Yeah. You know, you, you hear of uh, Christians always say, God is good all the time. And then they say, all the time, God is good. You know, one of the attributes of God that I love is omniscience. Do you know why? What is omniscience, by the way? All knowledge. He knows everything. Your past and in the future. And you know that that gives me a lot of uh, uh, hope because if something bad happens to you, God knows that. You know, a lot of us, uh, a lot of bad things happen to us and God knows that. Along the way, we just have to come to him and talk to him and his grace is enough for all of that. Thank you. <clears throat> the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Since I stopped. Set for the kingdom sins my life he controls since I gave my heart to Jesus the longer I serve him the sweeter he grows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart. Overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Every near he is supplying plenteous grace he bestows. The 
Thank you, dear family, for that beautiful music. Good morning, church family. We have most of our kids are on uh, being bells today at courthouse, and Brother Desmond is preaching there as well. And but good to see you this morning. And Brother Desmond is not here, and he gave me last week. He had a communion gown and the Bible as well. We'd like to remind you that every week we, for those who like uh, to take the baptism gown and the Bible to pray for someone, either a family member or your, someone at work or your neighborhood, praying all week for that person that will give their heart to Christ. So is there someone this morning? Yes, please, just come in. Can I pray with you? So what, what we do is... to my class, Ryan. We're uh, going to do it as class. Okay, great. Thank you. What we do just every day, just pray for that person that you're praying for. Can I pray with you yes, now? Yes, please. Pray also. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we are very grateful for Miss Simon choosing, Lord, to pray for someone. Just may you help her to remember every day, Lord, to lift you up and that person that she's praying for. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, great. And really, we are very grateful for Ms. Simon's ministry. Ladies, you have to sign in for, uh, for April 20 to be an amazing woman tea thing, you know? So that's a good thing as well. We'd like to remind you that next week we have our communion, communion service. So please, if you can come a little bit early doing your food washing, we love and we do practice the food washing in our church as well. So we'll be starting from 9.30. Next week, we have communion and do the food washing early at 9.30 before the church service. And also, we have a special Sunday. You know, one of the important events is the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we love to highlight that, you know, to give glory to God and thank Him that He came and died for us and was resur resurrected as well. It will be a breakfast and then some very spiritual part as well. Please uh, mark that your calendar. Next Sunday, a week from tomorrow, we have the Resurrection Sunday as well. Let's pray and start. <clears throat> our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you once more, Lord, that you are our God, our Father. We ask, Lord, to open our hearts, our minds, to listen to your message. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, again, we're glad you are here and we'd like to welcome those who are online. We continue our talk from the book of Ephesians. Paul is addressing a very important issue to the church because he's asking the church to go and preach and teach and witness. To do that, you need to be honest and faithful and telling the truth. What is the truth? And what, yes, amen. And telling Jesus is the truth. But sometimes there is something called half-truth. What is half-truth? Half-truth is like a lie. And Paul is dealing with us here, reminding the church, when I witness and I share, I need to tell the truth, the whole truth, not the half-truth. There is a book called uh, The Day That America Told the Truth. And in that book describing about I think one of the greatest uh, moral issues that many people struggle is with telling the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Because yes, we could say the truth, but most of the time could be half truth. And half truth considered to be lie. That's why Paul here saying when you witness how you fully share with others. And there was uh, a survey or in the same book said 90% of, of people, you know, of us lie regularly. And out of the reason why 
uh, 90% said one of the reasons that out of the 91% who lies, 92% of them said they lie because they save face, not to be embarrassed, you know, just to look good. Another 98% uh, said the reason they told lies because not to offend people, just to be nice to your lie. And Paul is dealing with that, he helping the church here how to deal with lies as well. There was an interview with the 20,000 middle school, high schoolers. Uh, that interview, 90% admit that they lie every day, uh, that they lie regularly for their parents. 90% of the 20,000 20, that they lie for their parents. 70% they told they lie weekly. So lies is kind of happening, you know? Even if you say the half truth, <coughs> it does happen as well. You could say that was among those who don't come to church or ungodly. No, that surveys among everyone, you know? Most of us are struggling telling the full truth, you know, because we're dealing with the half truth as well. Half truth. And that's the truth. And there are all kinds of uh, different uh, lies. Some people say white lies. It's very known in some culture, you know, white lies. W they consider, it, they say it, innocent lie. You lie to help someone. Is that correct? Is it, it does make sense you do something wrong, so you can do something good. That, and we give excuse. I know of someone, not in the area here, not here at all, but he, he knows, he said, I lie to help people. You know, he goes to people fighting with each other. He goes, oh, so and so said, you are amazing. You are good. And go to the other person. The other person said, you are amazing. You are good. So he lies. Is that good? No, no. It's not excuse. Maybe in his heart trying to do something good to reconcile with his people, but called not telling the truth. Half lies. So there is no excuse telling white lies or innocent lies as well. One of the lies I learned while I was studying that silent lie. Have you heard about silent lie? Yeah, me too, Jack. I did not hear that until I read it. Oh, silent lie is when someone assumes something good about you and you keep silent and it's not true. He said, oh, thank you. Wow, you did that amazing job. You gi he gave you a credit, and you really didn't do it. But you like it. You like the credit, and you like that information. So yeah, you just keep quiet about it. You didn't speak it. That's called silent lie. Because you didn't do it, and it's not yours. So you have to clear it out. So silent, silent lies as well. So there are all kinds of lies not telling the truth. And Paul is highlighting that to the church as well. So cheating also considered part of the lies. And among kids or even adults, you know, sometimes we give ourselves excuse why we cheat. Oh, because everyone does it. Or because of the teacher is mean to me. Or because of that supervisor, he's just mad at me. Whatever, you know, we give ourselves. And Paul helping us to understand that. That's why our verse, Sister Melanie read for us, it, therefore, the New King James Version, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. He's saying, therefore. Why he said, therefore? Because we are, he's building his conversation, right? Because we are taking verses to preach from, but he just like talking. If we go back to verse 20, uh, Ephesians 22 to 24, Ephesians chapter 4, 22, and it says, we'll just maybe uh, say that you put off, I'll read from verse 20, Ephesians 4, 20, but you have not learned Christ. Indeed, you have heard him and have taught by him. As the truth is, Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct. So he's kind of, last week we spoke about the process of a change. 
and the importance of a change. Then he said, therefore, be careful. And if you notice, Paul here becoming more personal, right? He's highlighting some sense that we need to be careful of. And he's talking about lying here. He said, be careful from lying. You need to make sure, he says the truth and the full truth as well. And in fact, next week, in the verse following that, he'll be dealing with anger. And anger is very serious as well. But today we're just dealing with the lie, the truth. Christ is the truth. And he is the only truth. That's why we need to be careful. In uh, verse 15, Ephesians 4, Paul says, if you have your Bible, Ephesians 4, 15, and it says, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into who is the head of Christ. He's warning the church, said, yes, you need to be honest and you need to be truthful, not to lie, but how can you tell the truth? And we did address that last time, telling the truth. Doesn't mean that you don't want to lie to someone. You'll go and destroy that person and telling the truth about that person. You need to say the truth in a way God gives you wisdom how to handle it as well. So he's helping us not to lie, to tell the truth, but in the same time we need to be nice in a Christian way, telling the truth as well. So if someone said, well, I need to be honest and share among others, no, you don't have to. All you need, if someone asks you about someone said, I am not free to talk about that matter now. I cannot. And that's true. So you don't have to. If someone shared with you a truth or you know a fact about someone, you don't have to share it. You're not lying. Say, I, can, I, I don't have that authority and I don't want to share it. So you are clear about that. That is very important about that. In uh, Proverbs, if someone can read for us here from the screen, Chapter 10, verse 19, with a loud voice. Yes. So we need to be careful of our lips, you know. When we slow down and think and pray, God will give us wisdom how to handle. So there are three main points we are going to share this morning from that verse about sharing the good news, which is, uh, truthful beginning you know we have to be truthful how to share that we need to speak as Christ as followers of Christ we need to speak have truthful communication also unity drives truthfulness as well so truthful beginning as Paul said it in verse 22 we talked about last week it says Ephesians 4 22 and that you put off concerning the former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. What's the old man we shared last week? The old man, which is the old life, right? How was your life before Christ? Your life before Christ probably you were lying, cheating. You know, people, before they meet Christ, they have a missed life, right? bad life. He said, no, when you come and know Christ, you need to stop that. And we share it's kind of a process of a change. And in verse 24, he says that you put on the new man which was created according to God. So you need to pray. Say, Lord, teach me how to say the truth and the full truth. Not to play with lies, you know and not just to deceive uh, or using lies. If indeed you have heard him and have taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. So Jesus is the truth and we need to speak the truth. I need to speak Jesus Christ and we need to give credit to the Lord Jesus Christ for our truth. Our nature as an old man, nature, we lies right we like to lie we like to make stories but when i pray i say god give me strength god give me power there is a story about a man who went to the bank to get some money you know or do some change the cashier gave him more by mistake she was mistaken and gave him 
more money than he was asking for or he requested. Then he went back and told her, ma'am, I think you give me more than I need. You give me extra money. The lady said, oh, thank you. I really appreciate how honest you are. I told her, in fact, I'm not. According to my human nature, I wanted to take that money and enjoy it. But Christ who is in me said, no, you cannot do that. And he gave glory to Christ. So to being honest, sometimes we give ourselves credit. No, because Christ is in us. That's why to be truthful to Christ as well. Sister White said a good statement here. She said, truthfulness and integrity are attributes of God. They are from God, right? I had the pastor was back uh, in Egypt, you know. All his sermons was integrity. How he was speaking about how to be honest and truthful person as well. And Paul telling his church here in Ephesians, when you go out, teach, you have need to have integrity. You need to be truthful and honest to him as well. So, uh, second point is, as Christ followers, we need to have truthful communication. We need to have. So we need to understand, the, recognize the source of truth and the source of lies. Who is the, we know it already before we're speaking. Who is the source of truth? Who speaks the truth? It comes from God, right? And who is the source of lies? Yes, you can speak out because we're about to sleep here. Satan, yes, we need to make sure here. So Satan is the source of lies. Christ is the source of truth because Christ is the truth, right? He is, speaks the truth for us as well. And in fact, in John 17, verse 3, John 17, verse 3, if you have your Bible open with me, John 17, 3, and it says, and this and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So the only true thing, the true is Jesus Christ. Christ is the truth, and he speaks the truth as well. And he says, in hope of eternal life, which God who cannot lie. You know, God always tells the truth cannot lie. That's why we trust in him and we believe in him. And what Paul is telling us in the, to his church in Ephesians as well, he said we need to trust God. Christ is the truth and he's telling the truth. Who is the source of lies? Satan, right? In uh, John 8, 44, it's a very known verse saying, he is a liar and a father of liars. You know, do you remember the first, or he lied at Adam and Eve? Do you remember that lie? He said, when you eat from that tree, what will happen? You shall not die. In fact, the whole world still believes that statement till today. It's a big lie. Because we know when a person dies, he falls asleep in Christ. And but said, people, thou shall not die. And Satan lied at Adam and Eve. So he is the source of lying, which is Paul telling us today, be away from Satan. Do not believe in him because he is the source of lies as well. So we need to be careful. We need to understand that Christ is the source of truth. Satan is the source of lies and deceiving as well. In uh, the second point is recognizing the importance of the truth, truthfulness to God. It's very important to say the truth to God. In uh, Proverbs here, he's saying, lying lips are the abomination to the Lord, but those who deal truthfully are his delight. God does not like lying lips because when we lie, we destroy. God wants us to say the full truth and the only truth, not half truth as well. There is a good statement. Maybe someone can open Proverbs chapter sixteen, uh, chapter six. Proverbs six. 
verses 16 to 19 and read it with a loud voice. Proverbs 16, sorry, Proverbs 6, verse 16 to 19. You can stand up and read it. Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 to 19. Yes, please. Yeah, see what Solomon is telling us. I'll just read the last verse for the sake of those who are online as well. So verse 19 says, A false witness who speaks lies and who sows discord among the brethren. That's why I said be careful from lies. And Paul advising the church when you go out and preach, be careful from lies. Because lie could destroy your life, your family as well lying lips so adam and eve when they sinned their life was messed up right when they believed that lie they start to lie as well they start to have that sin in them that's why i said be careful from lying as well lying could destroy our life you could be building your relationship with your family your spouse for maybe working hard to have a strong relationship but one lie could destroy your marriage, right? That's why be careful. You need to say the truth and the full truth as well. Let's move to the third point, which is commit to truth, uh, truthful obedience. We need to be committed to obedience. And we need to must choose, choose to obey God. We need to obey God so he can help us not to lie. If Adam and Eve from the beginning obeyed God, they will not listen to that lie and they fall on that lie as well. As well, we need to make sure that uh, make a prayer commitment not to lie. I say it in my heart. Say I need to say the truth, only the truth as well. And that was very important. You know when Peter fell in the trap. When that in John chapter 18, verse 17, when that young lady came and asked him the question, are you not also one of these man's disciples? Are you? See how she's just putting him in that corner to make him lie. And because Peter was afraid, he said, oh, no, 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 I am not. He lied, right? We call it, he denied Christ by lying, not to know Christ. That's why we need to be careful. Satan sometimes use ways how to make us lie and we maybe we didn't mean it and we don't feel it but he make us lie as well we need also to make a prayer commitment to tell the truth telling the truth that is very important and the full truth not the half truth do you remember some people in the bible have they said the half truth do you remember any stories from the bible abraham you know abraham he's my favorite character but Abraham, he was married to his beautiful wife, Sarai, or Sarah. And he, she's good. They decided to go to Egypt. There is always trouble when you go to Egypt, because that time represents sin, you know, and just like away from God. So they're going to Egypt. Then he told his wife, well, you are beautiful, and Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, likes beautiful women so say you are my sister otherwise you will kill me there is part of it true here right it's not full lie here what is the true part she's his sister right at that time they were marrying sister so she was his half sister so that's true that part is true but she's still his wife so when he told Pharaoh, she's my sister. This called half truth. He's playing with words. She's truly his sister, but at the same time, his 
Why? Many of us try to play that trick, right? Try to manipulate truth. And unfortunately, he lied. Considered to be lied. Because he said, have the truth. In fact, his son Isaac did the same mistake with his wife Rebecca. She was, she was beautiful and she wanted to go somewhere else. And told her, well, say you are my sister, you know. He learned lies. Not say, telling lies, that's very dangerous. Telling half truth is very dangerous as well. That's why when we say biblical things, we need to have sharing the have truth as well. That's okay. Let's move to the second, uh, fourth part, which is uh, confess our sins. That is very important as well. So when I lie, as human nature, it's bad, but that's okay. We have a merciful, loving God who cares for us. You know what? When Peter lied, what happened to him immediately? He went out, cried, say, Lord, forgive me. I'm sorry. So what you do when you lie, ask God to forgive you. Ask God, say, please forgive me. And then you go to the person you lied at and tell that person, I'm sorry. I have lied against you as well. He who conceals his transgressions will not prosper but he who confesses and forsakes them will find compassion so please open your heart that's okay if you lie we are human nature ask for forgiveness and say sorry it's better to go and say sorry to the person you lie to than the lie could go big and grow as well then let's consider the consequences of lying. There are some consequences for lying as well. Ask myself if I lie, what will happen? First, before we do that, there is uh, in Proverbs 19, 5, it says, a false witness will not go unpunished, and he who tells lies will not escape. Which is mean, if you lie, it will be known. If it's today or tomorrow, even after a hundred years, lies always be discovered. So that's why you need to be truthful. So you need to ask yourself, how will my lying affect my family? Imagine if, uh, if someone lies in the family. That could destroy a family, right? That's why before you lie, you need to consider that. How will my lying affect my testimony before unbelievers? Imagine you go and witness to someone. Then you see you, you are lying. Will they believe you? Even they will not even listen to you or even maybe sometimes you could curse God because of you. That's why you need to be, be careful of that. How will my lying affect my eternity? Yes, if I lie, God does not like liars, right? Does not like that sin because that is very clear as well. And uh, in fact, in uh, Revelations uh, chapter 21, Maybe someone read for us that good verse. Revelations 21, verse 8, with loud voice. Revelations chapter 1, verse 8. Almost second last chapter. Revelations 21, verse 8. Let's like read this with loud voice. Revelations chapter 21, verse 8. But the crowdly, unbelieving, you know, murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and prime storm, a stone which is the second death. So who are among those who will be lost? He's highlighting here. I say it again, adulterers, murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers, and liars. So liars is 
Lying is something very serious. It's a very serious sin. It's considered as a moral sexual sin because that's one of the sins that you don't even to deal with it. Liars, the same. So if you lie, you are like that kind of group of people, you know. Lying is very dangerous. That's why we need to be careful from lying as well. And then, uh, unity drives truthfulness. When we get together as believers, pray together, God will help us to stay truthful as well. I would like to end with that verse. Zechariah 8, 16 says, Therefore are the things you shall do. And speak each man the truth of his neighbor. Give judgment in your gates for the truth, justice, and peace. And it's what Paul is telling us today. He said, be careful as believers. Be careful when you go and preach others as well. Let's end it again and read the verse 25. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. May God help us to be truthful and say the truth. Let's pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you that you are reminding us that you are the true and truth, Lord. Help us to be faithful, telling the truth all the time. Not half truth, but telling the truth, Lord. Guide us and be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing hymn is number 528, A Shelter in the Time of Storm. Number 528. Please stand. <laughs>
our Father, we thank you that you are a God of peace, Lord. Yes, in the time of storm in our lives, many times, Lord, we get afraid, worry, and nervous. But God, you give us peace. So we ask, Lord, please give peace to our hearts, Lord. And help us to stay truthful to you. I just pray, Lord, for every individual here. May you touch us with a special touch, Lord. I just pray for those, our bells, Lord, are playing right now. Just may you give wisdom to each uh, student, Lord, as well. We ask you to continue to bless us and to help us to enjoy your Sabbath day. <coughs> In Jesus' name, amen. seated and have a blessed Sabbath. I would just like to announce that we will have a church-wide potluck next Sabbath after Sabbath school, and please join us for Sabbath school after church service today. <laughs> <laughs>